When I was a teenager, I visited Chile. To this day, Chile is probably my favorite country to have visited, largely due to the people, amazing geography, and culture. One of my favorite memories that remain with me to this day is when we visited La Chascona, a peculiar house nestled in the quiet Bella Vista neighborhood of Santiago. Resembling a boat, La Chascona represents the passion of its designer and owner, Pablo Neruda who designed it as an ode to the sea, as well as a secret love nest for his mistress. Since then, I've always been interested in Neruda, this strange, complicated man who did as much good as he was flawed. This video is sponsored by Babbel. Due to several amazing experiences in Latin America, from Chile to Argentina to Ecuador and Mexico, I've come to really love the Spanish language. Learning it has also opened up an entire world of people, places, art, and overall experiences that I couldn't even imagine knowing about before. Unfortunately, I live in a place where I rarely hear Spanish, and it's rare that I'll ever truly speak Spanish in day-to-day -day conversation. Sin embargo, recientemente he estado utilizando Babbel, an app that offers a diverse set of methods including podcasts, games, and lessons. Babbel has amazing lessons that allow me to continually improve my spelling and grammar. The lessons are planned based on your own pace, and you're also provided with constant refreshers and reviews so you stay on track. For an additional price, you can also sign up for live virtual classes that are taught by certified teachers and help with maximizing speaking practice. Click on the link below and get up to 65% off Babbel. That's less than $5 a month to learn a language. Neruda was born in 1904, 350 kilometers south of Santiago. Raised in a working class environment, his mother was a school teacher who would die shortly after his birth, and his father was a railway employee. By the age of 10, Neruda would take up an interest in writing, much to his father's dismay. He used green ink to symbolize his hope and desire and wrote mainly about the things he loved. By the age of 13, he had published his first work, Entusiasmo y Perseverancia, in his local paper, and gained the attention of the future Nobel Prize winner, Gabriel Mistral, who would always support his work. Around the same time, Neruda actually adopted the pseudonym Pablo Neruda, rather than his birth name, Ricardo Basualto, in order to hide his writing from his father. He then moved to Santiago in the hopes of becoming a teacher. However, while at the Universidad de Chile, he dedicated the majority of his time to writing poems, and quickly decided that this was what he truly wanted. Thankfully, he met the highly regarded publisher Don Carlos Nascimento, who he impressed with his 20 love poems and a desperate song. Thanks to Nascimento, the collection was published, and to this day, 20 Poems is the best-selling book in the Spanish language. Sadly, and in spite of his success, Neruda was living in poverty at the age of 20. To improve his situation, he decided to take up administrative roles in Rangoon, Colombo, Batavia, and Singapore. Aside from meeting his first wife at this time, this period was characterized by a severe sense of isolation and mental stress for Neruda. He would read large amounts of surrealist poems in order to cope. Finally, he returned to Chile, but only for a short while. He was soon given diplomatic posts in Buenos Aires and Spain, and eventually moved to Madrid. This only further helped in expanding his literary appetite, as he joined a lively circle of intellectuals in Spain. At the same time, he had his first and only child, Melva Marina. Melva suffered from hydrocephalus, and Neruda abandoned her entirely, leaving her with a foster family in the Netherlands. Around the same time, he left his wife to begin an affair with an Argentine artist 20 years older than him. His daughter would die at the age of nine, and he would not learn about this until much later. The Spanish Civil War soon broke out while he was still in Spain. Neruda became heavily political and declared himself to be a communist for the rest of his life, especially after learning about the execution of his friend Garcia Lorca by Franco's forces. Due to his diplomatic post, he was able to save over 2,000 refugees by fitting as many as possible into a cargo ship called the Winnipeg. After a brief appointment in Mexico as the Consul General, Neruda returned to Chile. He began to express a serious fondness for the Soviet Union, writing Canto a Grado and praising Stalin and his policies. He would even be elected as the communist senator of some northern provinces in the Atacama Desert. 
While senator, he protested largely against the treatment of Chilean workers. This is best represented in his famous Yo Acuso speech in the Senate, in which he read out the names of the victims who were imprisoned after revolting against working conditions of miners. After this controversial speech, Neruda was threatened with arrest and removed from office. The Communist Party was also banned, and so Neruda fled the country, traveling through South America on horseback. In Buenos Aires, he would take advantage of the slight resemblance he shared with his friend Miguel Asturias and use his passport to travel to Europe. There he met Picasso and many other intellectuals of the time, spending three years traveling through Europe and Asia. Unfortunately, his health began to decline and he suffered from phlebitis. A Chilean singer, Matilde Urrutia, was asked to take care of him and they soon began a secret affair. At the same time, the illegal Communist Party of Chile published Neruda's Canto General, which described the history of South America through lyrical poetry. Upon his second return, Neruda was greeted by a far more hopeful Chile. The socialist candidate, Salvador Allende, was elected as the first official socialist president of Chile, and soon Neruda was made the Chilean ambassador to France. Shortly afterwards, he was awarded the Nobel Prize for his work during the Civil War. On September 11th, 1973, an infamous coup, backed by American forces, replaced Allende with General Pinochet, establishing a military state and squashing any hopes of a socialist Chile. Around the same time, Neruda was diagnosed with prostate cancer. He was a primary target of the CIA, and his houses were thoroughly searched by Pinochet's military. Neruda supposedly stated, Look around, there's only one thing of danger for you here. Poetry. The death of Pablo Neruda is a mystery to this day. Although he was on record of dying of heart failure 12 days after the coup, some report that the doctor had made a stomach injection six hours before his death and had actually poisoned him under the command of the Chilean government. Some believe that Pinochet feared that Neruda was planning on establishing an unofficial government in Mexico to counter Pinochet's regime. Recent analysis suggests that laboratory cultivated bacteria may have been used to kill Neruda. One of the most apparent themes of Neruda's work is that of solitude. For Neruda, separateness and isolation is an illusion that must be overcome through art. Much of his work deals with revealing an interconnectedness with nature, with people, and with the abstract. These boundaries are transcended when we attempt to communicate our experience to others. There is no insurmountable solitude. All paths lead to the same goal, to convey to others what we are and we must pass through solitude and difficulty, isolation and silence in order to reach forth to the enchanted place where we can dance. This is the enthusiasm and perseverance he tends to describe, elements necessary in the creation of good art. Love and passion are likewise central elements to his embrace of interconnectedness. I love you without knowing how or when or from where. I love you simply, without problems or pride. I love you in this way because I do not know any other way of loving but this. Love for Neruda is the ultimate mystery of life, capable of saving us from the illusion of solitude. However, Neruda is just as concerned with the lead up to love, above and beyond the experience itself. Yearning is an element that inhabits every line of his poetry. The coming together and turning away is an integral part of romance. This is why, for example, his 20 love poems begin with a description of a lover's physical presence, their hair, odor, skin, and ends with accepting their absence. But in yearning, Neruda finds great beauty. Tonight I can write the saddest lines. Write, for example, the night is starry and the stars are blue and shiver in the distance. The night wind revolves in the sky and sings. Tonight I can write the saddest lines. I loved her and sometimes she loved me too. Neruda's passion extends beyond that which he felt for women. He also had an unmatched sensory interest in nature, especially the flora and fauna of Chile. A marine mountain flies towards the islands, a moon of birds winging south, over the fermented islands of Peru. It's a living river of shade, a comet of countless tiny hearts that eclipses the world's sun like a thick-tailed meteor pulsing toward the archipelago. As Neruda grew older, his work became far more political. His Canto General explains the history of the Americas in a lyrical epic of resistance, describing the animals and plants of South America as well as the stories of the oppressed. 
His intelligent use of the beautiful landscapes of the Americas is used to highlight the violent oppression and subjugation such a beautiful place has been forced to endure, and leaves the reader with a deep sense of injustice and tragedy. Authoritarianism was also an ever-antagonizing force in Neruda's life. After his experience in Spain with Franco, Neruda would use his platform to speak out against the rise of dictatorships. This is reflected in a departure from his more romantic style, to which he responds in his poem, I Explain Some Things. You will ask why his poetry doesn't speak to us of dreams, of the leaves, of the great volcanoes of his native land. Come and see the blood in the streets. Come and see the blood in the streets. Come and see the blood in the streets. Of course, Naruto was far from perfect. Although he denounced Stalin later in life, he would never fully commit to denouncing the repression of dissident writers in the Soviet Union. More recently, too, Naruto's work has been re-examined for its sexist treatment of women. One poem of Naruto's even recounts a non-consensual sexual encounter in which he forced himself on a worker of his. After a cultural committee voted in favor of renaming Santiago's airport after Neruda, many Chilean feminists came out in protest against the decision. Neruda is far from perfect, and whether he should be celebrated or denounced is an issue left up to Chileans, not to me. But he was a complicated man, possessed by a love of all that was beautiful and pure, and disgusted by the historical injustices that have shaped Latin America. Neruda was also shaped himself by the historical events in which he participated, by both his heroic acts during the Spanish Civil War and his lack of criticism against Soviet repression. He was a romantic, committed to love, but abandoned his sickly daughter, the product of his own passion. I think that this context only helps to better experience the hauntingly beautiful and tragic lines of his poetry, a man caught in history, yearning and craving for more full of life and sadness.